Well, howdy there guys and welcome into today's video. Today we're going to discuss exactly what I do with my money, where my money goes, where I put my money, all those sorts of things. We're going to talk about this real in depth. The way I personally think about my financial life is I think of it in terms of like I'm my own company essentially. And although I do have my own company and those sorts of things, I think of myself and my money coming in as like my own company and where do I put that money? Where's that money the best invested at a particular time in my life? And that's kind of the way I've always viewed it the past 10 to 12 years now. And I think that's one of the reasons I've always been so fascinated with finance, stocks and, and, and big corporations and whatnot because the way they look at things is like, they have money incoming and they're like, okay, where can we distribute this out to? Where can we put this money? How can we have the, the most money left over at the end of the pie and those sorts of things? And that's the way I've always kind of thought about my own life. And I think a video like this will give you, give you guys a little bit of perspective on not just what I'm doing with my money, but maybe thinking about your own life, your own finances, maybe a little bit differently and maybe even, even in a better way that keeps you ultra motivated over time. So I busted out my Sunday best for you guys. You know, the trick is like, you know, if you want to have millions of dollars, man, just wear a shirt that you got given to you from for, for free, literally just for free. I've been rocking this for 12 years now because I volunteered my time for Pat's run. And look at this, all these years later, I'm still rocking this, this uh, you know, on a video for YouTube. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you get some good value out of it. If you don't mind, smash a thumbs up. That helps the YouTube channel out in a massive, massive way. I appreciate each and every one of you that are part of the thumbs up squad. Believe me, I do, okay? It helps us in the algorithm big time, okay? Alrighty guys, so let's start getting into this. Let's, let's dive in a little bit here on kind of my cash flow of money, okay? So in terms of like, um, like ways I generate money, as many various ways I generate money, okay? One can be short-term stock price sales or option sales, something like that, okay? Now, this, I never go out there and buy a stock based upon like, or I try not to at least, based upon like, I'm gonna make some quick money on the stock or something like that. However, there are situations that come up where I'll invest into a stock. It goes up so fast. Like it just boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, it's like in the sky and I didn't really get my position built. And I'm like, okay, I have somewhere else better. I really wanna put that money. I wanna build another position bigger or something like that. And I'll go ahead and sell off sometimes if I've only held a stock for a few months, three months, six months, nine months. That is never my goal when I go in pretty much almost always when it comes to stocks. Like usually I'm trying to hold for years. But I mean, if a stock runs up like crazy, and I didn't get a position built like I wanted to, a lot of times I'll just take that short-term profit, especially if I have somewhere better to put the money, which happens sometimes. Like I'll be looking at some other company, I'm like, okay, this company I invested in has gone up 70% since I invested in it in three months. It's ran a lot. I didn't get my position built and this other company over here just fell 20% on earnings that I really love for the future even more than this other company. Let me go ahead, take the profit over there, move it over here. Now, when it comes to short-term stock price sales, the, the bad thing with it is you get taxed at an ultra high rate. And when you you know have, let's say, uh, between everything like millions of dollars coming in, like obviously the tax rate is, you know, way up there, pretty much as high as you'll pay. So that's the one bad thing, and that's one of the reasons I don't like to take short-term profits on stocks. However, if it's the best move I feel for me at that time, I will take short-term profits, and I do, and I've probably taken, across all my accounts this year, you know, for sure in the five figures, maybe even six figure range of just short term profits taken this year. Usually whatever I take in short term profits is much lower than long term profits. Usually long term profits, we're talking six figures and up from those possessions, okay? And so the next place I'm having money come in is like long term profit sales. So. If I invest in a company, everything plays out the way I thought it would. The stock runs as far as I think it's gonna run. And essentially, I feel like I have somewhere better to put the money. This is always key, you, you're gonna hear me say this. If I feel like I have somewhere better to put the money, I will go ahead and take that long-term share you know, share price gain I got. Um, and it really doesn't matter how big it is. If it's like 50,000 or 100,000 or several hundred thousand dollars, it doesn't really matter, I'll go ahead and take that. Usually the taxes I have to pay on a long-term gain, if I recall, it's somewhere around 20% percent roughly. So much lower than like my normal tax rate. And so that's that's way thrown off money. Obviously YouTube, right? I have three channels on YouTube. Two are really large channels. The other one, Financial Education 3, is a really, really small channel. And so obviously, you know, if you get a lot of views, you, you, a lot of ads play on your videos and things like that, you know, it's gonna throw off obviously a considerable amount of income. So YouTube income, dividend income from stocks. I'm not like purely a dividend investor at all. If you know me and you know my investing style, that's like, 
uh, kind of on the back burner of what I look for in a stock, but I do own several stocks out there that pay me nice dividends. I own some stocks that literally will pay me out five figures in dividends just from one stock in 2021. So dividends, uh, the private group. So obviously I have a private stock group. Some people join in there to, so they can learn all my strategies, exactly what to look for in stocks, how to build a portfolio. Some people join, you know, they just want to be part of that discord chat, the private discord chat we have in there so they can talk stocks with, you know, everybody that's in the private group. We have like, probably 300 plus members in there now that have over $100,000 in stocks. And we probably have at least 30 plus members now that have a minimum of a million dollars invested in stocks. And we even have a few members now, which I need to start an eight figure club. We haven't officially started yet, but we have a few members that are over eight figures now invest in the stock market. So some people just wanna be part of that Discord chat. Some people want the one-on-one -on -one coaching we have, which is like essentially where you, you have somebody that's proven successful in the stock market, I vet them, and then you can actually be coached by them one-on-one, -on -one. you know, somebody that's already climbed a, a half million dollars or $2 million, $3 million, wherever people are trying to go. So people join for different reasons. Um, obviously we have that. And then we have some little income streams that's just like, you know, little income streams is like anything under five figures. And that's just like, you know, little stuff. So. That's, that's that, so we have all this income coming in from all these different angles, okay? And from there, the money is going to two places, okay? The money's going to systems, or the money's going to peeps right after that, okay? Uh, which is people, okay? So systems, like we use Intuit for our businesses. Uh, we use Slack, like Slack actually, man, they make a lot of money off us now. Like I was looking at, our, you know, uh, Gabby, our CFO, she told me like the money we are paying to Slack now, and I was like, whoa, that's like not a small amount of money. Like we are paying a lot of money to Slack. So any Slack shareholders, like thank me because you got, you know, Slack's making a lot of money off me, okay? But I made a lot of money off Slack stock this year. So thank you, Slack, okay? Uh, Adobe, you know, obviously we're in the Adobe suite and all those sorts of things. And there's a ton of other softwares and systems that we use for our businesses and different things we're doing and whatnot. So, um, you know, definitely money goes there. This is the main place. Well, actually these two are the main places where money's going, okay? So people, uh, not let people know, but I actually have like a really large team behind me now. Um, you know, it might never seem like it because I'm just like recording YouTube videos and it's like, oh, what's Jeremy doing? Just looking into stocks and recording YouTube videos and, and whatnot. But I actually have a pretty large team behind me. So I'm my right hand man, Blake. So Blake came to me and he just wanted to do like, like Facebook ads and stuff for me. And this was, uh, probably not two years ago, probably a little less than two years ago. And you know, over time, he just showed me how valuable he was to me and to the team and things like that and finding the right people, finding other A players, adding them to us and things like that. And so Blake ended up just kind of becoming my right hand man. Like he's basically my COO of like whatever projects I go into. We're working on a huge project right now that no one really knows about that is gonna be more 2021 project. And uh, yeah, he's just, you know, he's awesome. You know, I wouldn't be nearly as successful um, without him being my right hand man. So, you know, I have a lot of loyalty to him and he, he's the man at the end of the day, okay? Uh, we have Matt, who's our, our head of the sales team, uh, another A plus player, you know, these type of guys. They're, they're so they're as focused as I am on what we're trying to do and what we're trying to build like they they live breathe and just like they're all about this like this is their number one thing in life like like there's this and then there's everything else in their lives and that's the type of people I really need around me um, you know when it comes to what we're trying to do and what we're trying to scale up to and whatnot we have Chris who edits all the videos for you guys he's been my video editor now for Coming up on almost two years, um, that was just, you know, I got to a point where eventually it was like, man, it was too time consuming for me to video edit. And I didn't want to outsource that to some, you know, uh, you know, try to send links to other people. Like I want to in-house somebody that knows exactly what the type of edits I want, what I want to do is right here with me, working with me. And I can be like, oh, can you do this, please? Can you throw this in the video? It's just real seamless. So Chris, he does a phenomenal job for us on that. He does some other things. He's also the person that does all the shipping of the six figure and seven figure awards to all the group members. And that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big job. Last, in the, just the last three weeks, we shipped out, I wanna say over 40 
five six-figure awards and over 10 seven-figure awards just in the last like three weeks. Like it's been crazy. Uh, Tesla stock's a big reason why people are just, you know, reaching some pretty high levels, but there's also a lot of other stocks out there that have been doing really well lately. So, you know, Chris is awesome. We have Michael, who's kind of new to the team. He's he's like the back-end stuff. He does so much phenomenal work on tracking, so much back-end stuff, it's ridiculous, okay? Just stuff that, you know, you really need an expertise there. He's an amazing guy. Gabby's our CFO, she does amazing. Anything payroll related, finance related, the money coming in, the money coming out, she's, she's on that, okay? I have six different seven figure coaches on payroll now. So these are people that have a minimum of a million dollars plus in the stock market. The majority of them has several million dollars in the market. They've proven successful in the market. They've, you know, know my strategies inside now. And those people are for the folks that want like one-on-one -on -one coaching inside the private group and whatnot. So those guys, those folks are, very expensive, okay? They're <laughs> very, very expensive because, you know, to get millionaires on your on your payroll, man, they don't work for cheap, okay? So those guys are phenomenal and I appreciate each and every one of them. Um, they, they do an amazing job, let's just put it that way. Like the, the, customer, the customer sat we have for the coaching program is ridiculous. It's like nothing I've ever seen uh, before in terms of just like how much people really enjoy that process, how much value they get out of it overall, it's crazy. I had five different six-figure coaches on payroll, which means essentially they have a minimum of $100,000 plus in the stock market most of them have like 400K, 500K, 600K. And those folks are there to kind of, you know, one-on-one -on -one help like the people that join the private group that might have, you know, 80,000 in their, their account or 50,000, or maybe they're just getting up and rolling. You know, these are people that are there to help them. These people are really to help the people that are, might already have 100,000, 200,000. They're trying to reach much bigger levels. Or like we have people joining there that want one-on-one -on -one coaching that have already like 2.5 mil in the market, 5 mil in the market. And they're looking to just kind of take things to the next level. Because what happens with some people is, they watch some of my videos, they see I'm successful at picking stocks, they start picking my stocks, they make a bunch of money, and then they're like, okay, I don't really know how to pick stocks for myself, I'm just copying all Jeremy's stocks, and they realize, oh my gosh, if Jeremy stops making YouTube videos, which could eventually happen someday, right? they're screwed. <laughs> so they're like, okay, maybe I should start taking this stuff a little more serious. And so then they go and dabble in the private group. They get one-on-one -on -one coaching and those sorts of things. I have Trevor, who's our lead of the coaching team. He's an amazing guy, uh, Trevor, Trevor Hassel. He's awesome, man. Just uh, a guy that just, you know, I can throw him into something and he's just gonna figure it out. We have Cole, who used to lead our coaching program, but now I've taken him over to our secret project that I can't really talk about right now. So Cole's over there now. We have a crazy amount of, of VAs on the team, like just nuts. Ton of independent contractors. I have a, a tax and law firm that we have for us at any point whenever we need them. Obviously, you know, at the beginning of 2021, we'll be dealing with them a lot, obviously. It's tax, it's gonna be tax season. Um, and then I have secret people, maybe, like people that just are looking into certain stocks for me and things like that, because I kind of do run my own accounts, kind of like a hedge fund or uh, a successful investment fund where maybe I have people that just are sifting through stocks for me all the time and know my strategies inside and out or are there to give me, um, you know, hey, have you heard of this stock? Oh, let me look into that a little bit, okay? So, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot, man. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of people and it's a, um, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm fortunate. And, you know, the amount of A players we really have is disgusting for like how early days like I am in kind of like business and, and these sorts of things. Like to have this many A players on the team is, is I'm thankful. I'm really, really thankful because I can tell you there's a lot of big companies, a lot of huge corporations that don't have the type of talent we have. So I, I honestly, I can thank YouTube for that. Like I would not have access to these type of people without like the hundreds of thousands of views like the channels get every single day every single week and those sorts of things like you know i'm fortunate so a ton of money is going to those things like a ton of money okay then from there uncle sam wants his cut he's like give me my cut okay let me talk to you guys about uncle sam for a minute let me talk to you about the tax man you don't play with the tax man okay let me repeat that you don't play with the tax man. A lot of people want to play with the tax man, and when you're, you got a lot of money, and you're gonna potentially have a lot more money in the future, you don't mess with the tax man, okay? I try to, and this is for the past several years, I try to treat everything as pure and honest as possible, because I can tell you, like Uncle Sam's taken down some of the biggest like 
like criminal enterprises in the world. So if you think Uncle Sam won't come after you and you got $10 million, $20 million, $50 million, yes, he's gonna come after you, okay? And if they come after you and they look in and they see a bunch of questionable stuff, you're on their list forever. And they're gonna be after you forever. Okay, so the biggest advice I can give every single person out there is don't play with the IRS, trust me, okay? So, like for instance, I bought this watch. It's a Frank Mueller watch, right? It's a five-figure watch. A lot of people in my position would write that watch off as a business expense. I'm not gonna do that, okay? Although it is very tempting to, to write a, a five-figure watch off as a uniform on your expenses. If the IRS audits me, how am I gonna make a case for a five-figure watch? Good luck, no one's buying that, okay? There's not a soul in the IRS who's gonna be like, oh yeah, that's okay, yeah, you need that Frank Mueller watch. That's a, that's a fair write-off, no, okay, no. I have, um, you know, our tax and law firm that represents us, especially our, our main tax lady, right? She is, I think what's called like an IRS federal agent or something, like she's the highest form of a person that is not in the IRS as you can possibly be. So she, her level of respect she has inside the IRS is like, you know, like way high, right? I can tell you, if I try to make a case on writing off this watch, she'd be like, don't do it, dude. You could potentially try that, but I can tell you, if you get audited, you're gonna get hit with that, and you get hit with that, they're coming after you forever, okay? And I'm, I just, I'm barely like, I just had my 31st birthday, like, I got a long runway ahead of myself if I'm, I'm still lucky enough to be here long term. And man, I don't, I don't want the IRS looking at everything every single year. That's a nightmare, man. That's a nightmare. So Uncle Sam, we take care of him. And at the end of the day, like Uncle Sam takes almost as much probably as the team does. Like that's what's crazy about that. Like all these A players, all making a lot of money from different things that they provide for me and for the company. And yet Uncle Sam probably takes almost as much as, as all those people. That's what's that's just crazy to even think about that, man. So from there, we get what is left over after people, after systems, and after Uncle Sam takes his cut, okay? And so this is where things actually start to get fun for me. Let me see where we're at recording time while we're looking good. So this is where things start to actually get fun. Like, you know, all this is like, you know, it is what it is. It's just part of the process. Like Uncle Sam's gonna get his cut. All these people are making money. All the systems are making money. But now the fun starts for me. I actually have what's left over at the end of the pie, okay? So I have a few like pennies to rub together. So what I have happened is essentially the money goes into what I call the launch pad, okay? And this is the way I kind of view it. Like money's going into the launch pad to kind of get like, psh, go up to uh, Mars in a, in a SpaceX rocket or something like that, okay? And so the money's usually either in checking accounts or brokerage accounts, okay? If it's like income from non-stock things, it's going to checking. If it's money coming in from like stock related things, then it's staying in the brokerage area, okay? And so the money's in the launching pads and it's ready to rock and roll. This is where things are finally getting fun, okay? Now, I'm always asking myself like where to put the money next, okay? And here's the thing, I take this day by day, okay? I have a day by day approach. I don't look at things as like, okay, I'm gonna put my money here this year or I'm gonna put my money here this month. I literally take it day by day and where do I see the best opportunity at that day and at this specific time? Because the thing is, so much can change so dang fast, okay? Like maybe I'm not that interested in buying that many stocks at the moment, okay? What if the NASDAQ falls 10% over the next month? Hmm, okay, now, now stocks are pretty darn interesting, right? What happens if some stock I love that I thought, yeah, it's not a very good deal, drops 30% on some bad earnings? Okay, like literally overnight, my thought process can change on a stock. What happens if all of a sudden a company I love, their CEO steps down? or all of a sudden they get into some, some bad, really bad material information happens around them, right? Like I have to adjust on the fly. I can't be like, well, I said I was gonna do this. No, I take it day by day, and as far as where I'm putting that money, I'm taking it as a day by day approach, and I'm looking out, and I'm usually looking at a, a few different places, okay? I'm looking at stocks is always my number one, okay? So I'm not the type of person that's gonna be buying index funds or something like that. I'm looking at literally individual stocks. And so I'm gonna look out there and I'll say, where's my best opportunities in the stock market right now? Now, if I feel like there's a time period where there's limited opportunities, 
or maybe I have to do a little diversifying of wealth. The next place I kind of look is not really savings accounts. I'm usually looking at real estate, okay? Now, savings accounts, let's talk about that real quick. Like, you know, there's certain time periods where I'm just like, okay, I don't really have that much I wanna go after stock-wise or real estate-wise right now, so let me just put some more money in a savings account at the moment, and that's kind of like a third launching pad. Like, it's like at the end of the day, money's in the savings account a little bit for a rainy day, but not just a rainy day, like an opportunity day. That's really the way I kind of look at it. It's in, it's in there, it's not over there forever. Like, we know savings accounts are trash, right? So I want to have some in there for a rainy day, and then I want to have some in there so I'm ready to go and, and whenever I see a deal, okay? But it, it, you know, after stocks, I'm looking at real estate deals. So I'm thinking about like, what, can, what property can I buy? as like a cash flow property, especially nowadays, I'm looking at like cash flow properties. What can I find that I can rent out and make really good cash flow? But I don't just look at it in terms of like a cash flow opportunity. I look at it in terms of like, what can this property appreciate in my opinion over time? So if I'm paying $600,000 for a property and I'm putting you know 20% down, which would be what, $120,000 roughly, right? Okay and I'm at a 2.6% interest rate, what is that property gonna be able to likely generate me, not just in rental income, but do I think that property could be an 800,000 or a million dollar property in five years from now? That's where things can get really, really interesting. I'm looking at specific areas that I think people are gonna to continue to wanna to move to. No different than when I look at stocks, I'm, I'm looking at the type of stocks that I believe more and more people are gonna to wanna to invest in over time because they see that revenue continue to go up, they see the profits continue to go up, they see that company becoming more and more relevant, so therefore they're, they're willing to pay a lot more for the shares in the future. That's the way I look at stocks. Same exact way I look at real estate. I'm looking at real estate and I'm saying, what specific areas Will people want to live more and more? And I don't just look at it as a city in general. So let's say you live in Austin, Texas, and you're like, man, Austin, Texas is blowing up right now, man. Austin, Texas is amazing. Austin, Texas real estate is going to continue to boom, okay? Let's say you're looking at it that way, okay? I'm not just looking at it as, okay, let me just buy property anywhere in Austin, Texas. I'm saying, what are the very specific neighborhoods that are on the come up right now that I think are going to be the neighborhoods people want to live, not just today, but in five years from now and 10 years from now, that are modern, that have the right amenities there, the right restaurants over there, the right potential like high-end shopping malls. Like I'm looking at all these different various factors and then I'm trying to figure out the best piece inside there. Same way, I don't just look at the stock market and say, I just wanna buy the entire stock market, the S&P 500 index fund. I'm saying, where's the best opportunities in the S&P 500 for me to invest? Where are the best opportunities in the Russell 2000 for me to invest? I could just invest in the entire Russell 2000. I'm saying where's the best opportunity for me in there? Same exact approach I'm taking in real estate. So it's a different approach than some take. Some say just you know get in wherever. I, you know If it's a good city, just get in wherever. I'm saying I want the best opportunity. So that's the way I kind of look at it and I'm, I'll use those down payments for real estate now. Also, I don't like to pay cash for real estate. I'm gonna do my down payment and that's about it, okay? I'm not looking to buy a house outright. I'm not looking to buy a $600,000 property and get rid of you know, $600,000 in cash. Not with these interest rates where they're at. Not with a two point something percent interest rate, even at a 3%, even a 4%, because what I'm gonna be able to get in the stock market is so much more than that, that it would be ridiculous. I mean, absolutely ridiculous for me to say, I'm gonna go ahead and part with all this cash when I can borrow money at like the cheapest rates possible. If interest rates are 8%, different story. But when it's 2 3%, it's like no-brainer, okay? So that's kind of the way I'm looking there. Now, I'm also always increasing cash a little. You might say, why are you doing that, okay? Here's a way I think about cash and why I always need to increase it, okay? As your net worth continues to climb, you, you, the amount of cash you have around also needs to climb, okay? So I always like to say, keep 10 to 30% of your money in cash, okay? And so if that's true, and let's say you have a million dollar net worth, that means you're keeping $100,000 to $300,000 in cash at all times. Okay, let me see where we're at. Well, we're looking good, okay? I always have to check that because when it's one of these whiteboard videos that kind of is a longer video, sometimes it shuts off at 30 minutes. And so it's because there's like a tax rule around camcorders where essentially you can't 
uh, like like record for 30 minutes or longer. So if you ever buy like a Canon or you know most Canons or Nikon's and different cameras, if you ever wonder why it shuts off at 29.59 minutes, essentially that's why. Okay. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, okay. That was great if you had a million dollar net worth, but what, what happens if your net worth keeps increasing? Now you got $10 million in net worth. So now I need to have a million to three million around, right? And so it's all about keeping the percentages right at the end of the day. And so somebody might think you're, you're going more cash heavy because you're carrying more cash. That's actually not true. Technically you're carrying more cash, but at the end of the day, you're really doing it because you're trying to keep the percentages right, right? If all you have is this, Let's say you only have $100,000 and now you got a $10 million net worth. Now you're 1% cash, 1% cash, okay? So that's why it's so important. That's why I'm always increasing cash a little bit because as my net worth goes up, I gotta keep more and more cash. It doesn't mean physical cash for those of you, you, that, those of you that are confused. It means like money in checking accounts, savings accounts, uh, easy to access money, could be CD, something like that. Um, money for rainy days, money for buying opportunities and things like that. So I always wanna be the majority of invested, but I always wanna keep something on the sideline, okay? Very important. So as far as 2021, what do I see for myself personally, okay? So for myself personally, I don't see myself buying properties. However, that could change. What if real estate also starts dropping? What if there's a particular market and I see some homes that are undervalued that I feel like are gonna go up a lot over time? That could change. So I bought two properties here in 2020, okay? Things could change, like things could change. Well, actually, I, I, I signed off on two properties in 2020. One finished in 2020, one's gonna finish in 2021, but, I don't think it's gonna be a real estate year, but at the end of the day, I'm taking things day by day, and who knows, man? Maybe I end up buying another property in 2021. Maybe I buy two properties, like you never really know. Um, stocks, like I think 99% of stocks are at fair value or overvalued right now. I think literally just about 1% of stocks are actually a good deal right now, which means there's still a good opportunity in the market. There are thousands of stocks. Do the numbers, let's say there's, uh, I don't know, 3,000 stocks in the stock market. That means there's still at least 30 stocks out there that are really good deals, right? So you always have that opportunity as an individual stock picker, but I don't, I don't feel like it's a time where you're shooting fish in a barrel and it's like, oh, all these stocks are deals out here. I just don't feel like that. Stock market drops a bunch, hmm, or some specific stocks drop. All of a sudden, next thing you know, I'm gonna be plowing more money than ever into the stock market, right? So uh, savings accounts, it's not a very attractive time for savings accounts. Like I said, that's just a launch pad, man. I'm just looking at savings accounts as kind of like a launch pad for money, essentially, at the end of the day, uh, you know, and a placeholder for money because savings account rates are just really, really bad. But what if, what if all of a sudden, this probably won't happen, but what if interest rates also went to 3%, 4%? Okay, now savings accounts are much more interesting, right? I doubt that's gonna happen, but what if it did? This is why I take it as a day-by-day -day approach at the end of the day. And so this is the way I run money in my own life in, you know, a lot of people wonder like, how do you stay motivated when you already have millions of dollars, when you already have, you know, all the materialistic things you could already, you know, ask for in life and things like that. Like, how do you stay motivated after that point? I really view it as like, what's your long-term goals and what's your plans for the money? That's a big thing. Like, what's your plans for the money? So I always look at it as like, you know, if I can make, let's say I make a million dollars from, from just stock sales in 2021, okay? What that can gain me in the next year, in the next year is just immense because in five years I might start making $5 million a year from stocks. And then another five years go by, I might start making 10, 20, $30 million from stocks. And so the numbers are continue to compound and get bigger and bigger. And the impact I can make in the world is just a lot greater, right? And that's kind of the way I view my life. Like whether it's coming up with new, new companies, products, services, things like that, or like my long-term goal, which is like obviously like philanthropy and being able to hopefully to like change the way charity is done. Cause I feel like a lot of people just waste their money with charity. They're, they don't really think about it. They're just kind of like throw money around. They're like, ah, oh, you know, I made a lot of money in my life and now I'm Old and I got a billion dollars, let me just throw it into some charity. And I feel like there's not a lot of thought. So I would love to like change the way charity is done and just make it into like a system where it benefits other people a lot more than it does today. Not to say it doesn't benefit, I just think there's new levels you can take that game up to. And I would love to take uh, things to much higher levels later on in life and do things like that. And so that's the way I always view it. I'm like, if I just get complacent and like, like all the long term stuff I'm trying to do and trying to build, just like, Obviously the biggest, like the opportunity is not there for me to try to do a lot bigger things down the road. So 
that's the way, that's what always keeps me hungry and always keeps me motivated even when you, you know, have it all as they say in, in those sorts of things. It's just about like where are you trying to go long term? What are the type of things you're personally trying to do? And everybody's driven by different things. My thing is not the next person's thing. My thing is my thing. It's been driving me for the last 12 years and it's really fulfilling for me to be going after my mission, but everybody's got different missions in life. Like some people really want to create generational wealth in respect to that. Like I said, everybody's got different things they're going after and um, you know, I just kind of keep driving forward and I just stay ultra motivated because I'm really trying to go after some really big things long term. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you don't mind, smash a thumbs up. That helps the YouTube channel, channel out in a massive, massive way. I appreciate each and every one of you as always. And uh, I would love to hear about some of your goals for 2021. What are you trying to do? Where are you trying to put your money in 2021? I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section. I'll definitely be reading through the comments, guys. Thank you for watching and have a great day.